In this short video, I'm gonna run through why most trade websites suck and how you can fix them. Hey guys, Matt from Trading Web Guys here, and I just wanna run through some of the observations here. I've got six points, well, I've actually got seven, but I've put a point one into one of them because it kind of ties into it. However, there's six points here which we see commonly appearing with websites that we rebuild, with clients that we're working with, um, that is kind of a recurring thing. And truthfully, if you can dial these things in, it will save you so much grief and it will make you look so much better. And so the first one is your website is not a true reflection of the caliber of the business that you are. And what I mean by that is, like so often when we're working with clients, they are so good at what they do and they have this amazing, they're so professional, they're, they're such an authority in their space, yet if you go to their website, it does not reflect that one bit. So it's really important that you guys have websites when, because you have, what you have to think about is this, right? Your website is essentially gonna be the first point of contact that a potential customer is going to have with you from an engagement perspective. So if you, for example, are driving down the street and you know they see the name on your door, they see the phone number and they see the website, we know statistically they're eight times more likely to Google you before they call you, right? So be Googleable. Is that a word? Maybe, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying, right? Now, what does that mean? When people actually get to the website, make sure it looks professional, make sure it's got a nice design. It's very common to have a website that might've been built five or 10 years ago that straight up just lacks the functionality of modern websites. And it's kind of your obligation, your opportunity as well to you know make sure that the website is current and it's a reflection of a nice modern current business. Make sure the design looks good. Make sure your website has conversion elements placed on the website to improve that lead becoming a conversation of some sort. And guys, please make sure you have clear navigation. There's nothing worse than getting to a website and you just don't know where to find the information that you're looking for lives. You've got to make sure that it's clear, it's simple and cut a direct path to it. And I'll give you a prime example of a, of a, a navigation issue that we see all the time. People that have all of their services living on one page with next to no content on any of them. First of all, it's impossible to optimize that for search. So you'll never show up for an SEO for search terms relating to that service. And second of all, if people were interested in information relating to say uh, decks or say uh, bathroom renovations or um, you know solar battery installations or whatever it might be, make sure that you have pages clearly defined on your website with information and content that's relevant to that thing. It would just mean that people are getting the information they want and then if they wanna take the next step, the call to action will do that. And we'll get to that in a little bit. The next problem that we see, number two, is a lack of mobile optimization. And it kind of ties in truthfully to the first point where some of these modern builders will kind of tick that box for you already. However, if your website is not mobile friendly, it is important that you do make sure that your website does respond on mobile, especially if you're a trade business and especially, especially, especially if you're in an emergency or reactive sector of that vertical. And what I mean by that is put yourself in the shoes of your customers. If you've got a block drain, you're not gonna wait till you get home to look it up on your computer. You're gonna go straight to your phone, you're gonna punch it in, block drain near me, whatever it might be, and you're gonna hit enter. And so you wanna make sure that the website is optimized for mobile as a priority. We see statistically across the board for pretty much every client that we work with, the majority of their traffic today comes through mobile. So make sure that it's mobile optimized. The next mistake that we see, number three, is outdated or generic irrelevant content. Now, this is a trap that a lot of businesses fall into, and it normally stems from an initial laziness in the creation of that content to begin with. So make sure that when you have content on your website, put the time in, in the early stages to, I mean, I'm not gonna say get it right because it's never done. And I would never recommend that you don't launch a website because you need to make sure that the content is perfect. It will never ever be perfect, but certainly put some effort in to make sure that the messaging on that page and the content that you've got created, good enough to portray the message that you are trying to do on that page. Now, I would strongly encourage you to um, revisit the content on the page because in the interest of keeping that content relevant and keeping it current, 
you want to update things. Business change, services change, things need to be updated. So it's important that you apply the attention that it deserves to make sure that your messaging stays current, stays relevant, and is on point. Now, as I said in the, in the beginning, I kind of have a point 0.1 that I want to add in here. This is 3.1. It could be a four, but I've made it 3.1 because in the interest of content, it's really important and most people do not do this well or well enough or often enough is that you're telling your story. Now, you want to be able to showcase the things that you do so that when people come to the website, your story tells it for them. That whole concept around don't tell me, show me is extremely relevant today. People are coming to you because they want to be seen. They want, they want to see you as a trusted advisor. And if you can tell, if you can show them the stuff that you do rather than tell them, picture tells a thousand words. So invest in adding things like stories about projects that you've completed. Maybe it is more services that you've done. Maybe it's client testimonials. Maybe it's case studies. Maybe it's a number of different things, but just use that tool as a way that you can communicate what you do and it will serve you very well. And I'll tell you why primarily, because in most instances, if somebody's been to the website, they've consumed some of your content and then they've reached out to you, they're significantly more qualified in when you look at the sales journey than someone who has not consumed that content. Yes, it takes time to do it, but it's about saving time in the future and it's about improving conversions. So simply just make it part of your process to collate content and add it to your website. Number four, it might seem obvious, but slow loading times is still an issue. We see it all the time. Uh, you wanna make sure that people don't have patience today and people haven't had that patience in a long time. So you wanna make sure that when people do go to your website, that it loads fast enough for them. Again, some of the modern builders today uh, will help with this significantly, but it is important that it's low. And look, it, you don't have to be the world's fastest loading website. You really don't. Truthfully, when you go to a, when, when somebody visits a website, the thing that will load first is the, the above the folds, or if you're on a mobile, the thing that loads first is important. And then as the as you scroll down that site, you also want to make sure that it loads. It doesn't have to be like loading within hundreds of seconds anymore, but it is important that it loads fast. So if you've got a website that's taking a long time to load, you want to make sure you fix that. Number five, you're making it way too hard for people to contact you. We see this all the time. No phone numbers, no web forms, no web chat. It's like, how do I get in contact with this person? If they've got a situation where it's an emergency and they need to reach out to you, make it easy for them. Have click to call phone numbers on your website as a bare minimum. Have um, forms that people can fill in. If they don't wanna call you, have a way that they can fill in the form. Just make sure you're meeting people where they're at and make it easy for them. You don't wanna be in that situation where they have to go digging through every page on the website to try and find a contact page where they've got an email and they've got to copy the email and they've got to paste the email into their email provider on their phone to say like, it's just too much work. Just have a form where they can enter their details and they can request a callback or they can simply just push a button and they can call you. And number six is you're really not clear about what people should do next. And what that means is like, what is the actual journey that you want that visitor to go on in order to make contact with you or consume content or whatever it might be? Call it a call to action, whatever. The point is like, have a really clear understanding about what is the next thing you want them to do in order for them to become that next step qualified as part of your, through your sales process. So what is a call to action? Well, quite simply, it's an instruction. It's like, what do I do next? It's like, click here to find out more. It's click here to request a callback. It's push this number to call us. It's fill in this form and we'll get back to you. What is it that you want them to do? Is it click here to consume this content? Click here to um, answer this survey, whatever it might be. Now you can get creative with call to actions and I encourage you to do that. You can also have different forms, uh, different types of call to actions relating to uh, the different types of web pages. For example, if they land on a page which is the um, about home renovations, click here to download our 21 point checklist on the top. If they land on your home renovation page, it might be click here to download the top 10 things that you need to ask your home renovation specialist before you engage them. 
something like that. You can get creative with that. And off the back of that, I should probably add a, a point one in here. What does that actually look like once they click on that resource and they download it, then what happens? Are they being pulled into a customer relationship management tool like the hub? Are they get, getting pulled into some sort of nurture sequence where every couple of days they get dripped out of another email or something along those lines? Is there an internal trigger that says this person's downloaded this sales guy, go call this person. So what does that actually look like? Anyway, I hope that was helpful. There's six of the top things that we see people sort of tripping up on when it comes to web sites and web development and things like that today within the trades. They're not super hard things to fix. Most of those things you don't need an agency like us for, you can go and fix them yourself. It does require a bit of strategy. It does require you to actually do something different. But again, the ball is yours. Go and get them. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Please, while you're here, subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Now, listen, if you are a trade-based business and you work in projects, roofing, bathrooms, kitchen renovations, home renovations, solar installations, that kind of thing, we would love to be able to showcase you as our next success case. Insane return on ad spend over here. We're talking 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 13,000% return on ad spend week in, week out with some of our clients. And we would love to put you in that picture. So please head across to tradey.wiki forward slash YT for YouTube. Tradey.wiki forward slash YT for YouTube. I look forward to chatting to you soon. Enjoy the next episode and thank you for all your support.